Hello, everybody. Today I got a, something a little bit different here for you. Um, so I, uh, the last couple of years, I've been really interested in um, some advanced data recovery techniques for digital forensics, uh, things like JTAG and chip off and the physical computing stuff. And I got myself a Medusa Pro and a Riffbox and um, all that kind of stuff. So I've been playing around with that. And lately I've also been getting into IoT devices, so I also have myself a bus pirate, and I've been playing around with some stuff. Uh, and it's gotten to the point where um, if I want to share that with students, i, I got to find a way to do it. Um, and of course, getting everybody their own you know, DC power supply and breadboards and jumper wires and stuff, um, that's obviously on the list at some point we got to get people working with the actual physical things. But I'm also uh, looking for a, a good way to introduce students to these concepts virtually just because the expense is lower. Um, the, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, components or people blowing up components. They can try stuff out. And so I've been looking for something uh, like a, a simulator for quite a while um, and preferably one that's low cost and one that's available on a popular platform like Steam would be ideal. And I came across Crumb. Uh, Crumb is, uh, is pretty much exactly what I've been looking for. Uh, so this is from developed by Mike Bushell published by the vital group limited released November 18th, 2022. It's a powerful real time 3d electronic simulator or electronic circuit simulator, excuse me. Um, and I've got like eight minutes of playtime in it. So I, I started it up and I took a look at it um, enough to know that it, it might be just what I'm looking for. And I thought maybe, Hey, you know, this is different for the channel, but let's, uh, let's give it a try and, uh, see what it has to offer here. So we do have a, a breadboard here and throw that in there. Looks like a pretty standard breadboard to me. Uh, we have our power rail and we can rotate with, uh, this axis here, we can move individually along just the X or Y axis, um, or we can remove it here. Looks like if we grab the little square uh, and it clips in too, that's nice. So we got ourselves a breadboard. Uh, let's start with something really simple. Uh, let's throw in a power supply as well. Move that off the side. That's, I guess, if there's anything I don't like, it's the fact that components can kind of be stacked on top of each other, but I don't know, I guess it is what it is. Um, position, connect the power, connect the negative. Here we go. Finish. So we got power supply, we got a breadboard, it's hooked up, it's not powered on, it seems. It doesn't seem to be. Um, let's um, slide up an LED. See what we get. So we can connect here red. Let's put it right there. Uh, let's get a resistor in the line. 220 ohm, that should be fine. And we got that resistor there to keep us from blowing up our LED. We'll, we'll try blowing one up here to see what happens. Uh, blue, 220, or sorry, 2.2 2 .2 volts, max current 3. All right, so we can put that in here. Now, if I connect uh, one side here to this rail, but I connect it along the same rail, the LED won't light up because we're going to be bypassing the LED. So we're going to need to put this one on the next line. There we go. And then we're going to need a jumper back to complete the circuit. So we'll throw this here, and it's fine right there. Simple LED circuit. Um, now to turn on the power supply. What does scope? What does this do? Nothing, it seems. We can rotate our camera by holding down right. We can pan the camera by holding down middle mouse. Left mouse doesn't seem to do anything, and I can't seem. Nope. Oh. Oh, cool. Cool. That's what scope view is. Neat. So we can actually check signal on the oscilloscope. That is very cool. Uh, okay. Interact. That's what I'm looking for because I think we can just use this to flip the button. There we go. Okay. So five volts, 10 milliamps. We can adjust this with this knob. Yes. So we need 2.2 forward volts. So if we go below that, goes off. 
And if we mess with the voltage right around that forward voltage, we can see the LED dims as it ought to. Oh, except we exceeded the voltage there briefly. LED rating exceeded 30 milliamps. What happens? Can we, can we really get the sucker going? No, it doesn't look like we can blow it up. Maxed out here. What are our other views, though? What if we get voltage? Oh, yeah, we can see. Let's bring this back down to where it ought to be. Um, so yeah, we can see all the, uh, all the connections here are colored based on voltage. That's nice. Lots of power flowing through the resistor. That was, we, we expect to see that. And we can see the pins are labeled for us. We got our anode there. Nice. That's very, very good. Very good. It would be nice if we could destroy the component. I understand why we can't, uh, but I think popping LEDs virtually would be preferable to doing it um, physically, but I guess that's a lesson they'll have to learn sooner or later. All right, so that's a simple circuit. What else can we add in here? We also have got caps, what else we got? Inductors, potentiometers, switches. Oh, nice. 4-bit, 8-bit switches. What do we have here? Here we got diodes, inner diodes, transistors, MOSFETs, silicon rectifiers. We got LEDs. We got a buzzer here. Seven-segment display. Oh, we got complex displays. That's cool. Uh, we got a 12-volt signal generator. We got DC, ICs. We got Arduinos. And then we got our serial monitor. That's neat. What do we have for Arduinos? Just a nano? Small, complete, and breadboard-friendly board based on the ET Mega 328P released in 2008. Well, I certainly like that. That's good to see. Would be nice if we had additional components. I wonder if this is expandable. Let me check Steam, see if there's any, um, like, community-generated content or anything for it. Um, you can save designs, that's nice. I don't see any community content for it, but it looks like development was uh, pretty frequent. Um, developer does say here this is December 13th this year there was a big update and uh, they're going to take a little bit of a break which I can't begrudge them for that but um, if this is what I hope it is then I would like to see more um, guides, reviews artwork, screenshots I don't, I don't see any mods it doesn't mean they don't exist it just means I can't really see them Simple LED circuit for a beginner, half adder using logic gates, full adder, and four bit rubble carry adder, four bit binary number. Okay, cool. Um, well, let's try, let's throw one of these seven segment displays. Let's see how easy it is to add these components. Oh, yep, they slot right in. Yep, nice. can expand out it here. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yep, they clip right in. It's nice. Turn our power supply off. And we can't can't move components once they're seated. We have to get rid of them entirely. Start over. That's well, I guess that's okay. 
So not exactly, you know, true to life necessarily, because you can just move components on a breadboard. That's the whole point, but it's not like it costs us anything. So, oh, except we can move this. So some components you can move, some of them you cannot. Okay. Uh, common cathode, common anode, max current, forward voltage. Okay. <clears throat> let's um. Let's see what happens, uh, when we uh, intentionally short here. So let's put. That's not what I wanted. Um, can't no. Okay. It's weird how I had to select a way just so I could select another component. That's fine. All right, power. Let's do this, and then let's uh, let's throw in another jumper over this here. It's a little weird how it did that. Uh, but I mean, I am doing something weird, so I guess I won't fault him. And then let's throw this on here. And now if we turn on our, yeah, warning short circuit. Can we even turn the power on like this? Yes, we can. But we do get a warning that there's a short circuit. So that's nice. And if we check, yeah, we've got voltage flowing all the way through. There's our pins we can see. We don't have to reference a um, diagram or anything. We can just have it labeled. That's nice. Um, let's actually get rid of this here. Let's try get rid of, yeah, let's get rid of the, this. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of this too. And let's, let's drop that Arduino on here. Actually, hold on. Let's check the IC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got lots of options here. That's nice. Uh, but let's drop Arduino on here. Let's see what we get. I do like that. It would be nice to have more options, but I do like that. All right. So if I do... Serial monitor. Let's drop that in. We can actually press the reset button. We have no ability to connect USB though. So it's got this port here. At least I don't think so. I don't see any cables like that. Yeah, that's just jumper wires. So we, we, we don't have a direct plug-in interface, but that's not like the end of the world. That's fine. Okay. All right. Well, this definitely bears more playing around with. We have a lot of potential here. Um, let me see. Let me see what we got here in screenshots. Let me see what some other people have done. Holy, holy cats. I'm bringing this over here so you can see it too. So yeah, yeah, you can you can build this out quite a bit. Um, oh, I didn't get a chance to check the scope yet. I should do that. Looks like it's a push button select LED. That's nice. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, that's neat. That's neat. Oh. 8-bit computer. Oh, what's this? There's a console. Microcontroller code editor. I didn't see that. Um, 
I didn't see that. Oh, there it is, code editor. Oh, that is nice. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That is very nice. So cool. Hello, world. Yeah, something like this as a, as a, like maybe like a midterm project or something for, for a course that leads to understanding this kind of thing. Oh, that would be so perfect. Um, how much is this going for right now on Steam? I typically, when I look for resources, I, I, I don't, I like, I prefer open source whenever I possibly can in terms of my education materials. If I do recommend something, I usually try to keep it extremely inexpensive. This is $9. I feel like that's not too much to ask for what we're getting here for, for, for a full simulator. And I mean, yet yeah, it doesn't have every component you could possibly want, uh, but it has an Arduino, which is already more than I was expecting. Um, the ability to write our own code. We don't have to mess around with like files on the back end and or dropping things into whatever. Um, perfect. This looks fantastic. Great learning tool. Um, I'm going to play around with this some more. Maybe I'll come back and do a separate video and show you what I come up with. From what I'm seeing on Steam here, um, loads of uh, creative people that are in this thing which is just great i also like to see that it's good for students to have you know other players uh and you know their discussion questions and stuff like available to help them learn if they get stuck that's that's very nice artwork Let's, uh, let's throw a buzzer in there, because I'm not getting any audio right now. I mean, you're not getting any audio because I have audio down. Um, but let's see if we actually get sound. Buzzer, passive, yeah, that's fine. And that component, let's throw it in here. Sure, why not? And then, actually, let's move it over here. Let's, uh, let's turn this down. Oop. Oh, okay, I got it. All right, it's fine. Let's throw that um, right here. Let's get the buzzer again. Let's throw that on the same rail as... Yeah. It's hard to tell. No, that's not right. It's hard to tell where it's seated. Yeah, let's move it over a little bit so maybe I can see a little better. See, that doesn't look lined up to me. That's lined up. Okay, drop that, and let's turn down the little digit a little bit. Oh, turn the interact button. Turn down, turn down, turn down. Okay. Play the circuit. I can figure out where it is. Is that right? Okay, yeah, we do have voltage running through it. It seems anyway. What was this buzzer? Forgot. Um, DC voltage, typical draw, one milliamps of five volts. Okay. I don't hear anything.
Oh, UI scale. Time step. I love the processing power. Okay. What happens if I turn the lighting off? Oh, then it just gets dark. Eh, I mean, that's, uh, I guess, an improvement, import perform potential performance improvement. I mean, we have. Oh. I don't hear anything. Let's chunk this. Let's move this. Oh, I'm not on it. That's why. The component is not where it ought to be. Yeah, so you are not in the right place. God damn it. There we go. I have to get real close to be able to do this, apparently. It's very hard to see. Yeah, you're fine. That's where I want you. That looks right now. <laughs> I still don't, I don't hear anything and we don't get any draw. Let me see. Oh, hold on a sec. Um, okay. Is this right? Buzzer. Oh. 
Oh. Well, yeah, that'll do it. I, it, it, it did give me a warning, though, so I uh, absolutely uh, would not fault the simulator at all. And as a matter of fact, the fact that it warned me at all is very nice. And that's not the right position. And I can't quite reach it. There we go. Still don't hear anything, though. Now it's working, but I don't hear anything. Um, is there, no, there's no volume there. Hmm. No, I don't hear anything. I can see that it's working, but I don't hear anything. Nope, nothing. Off. On. Nope, nothing. That's a little strange. A little bit unfortunate. Is it my... Oh, wait, hold on. It might be my own audio. Oh, it is my own audio. Okay, yes, I can hear it. I did not realize that my headphones had turned off. Probably should have been the first thing I checked. Okay, but yes, it is working. Let me turn your audio on so you can hear it too. Wait, what did it say? Buzzer supply voltage exceeded 8 volts. Oh, and if I go back, I can hear... There we go. Down to nothingness. Most excellent. Precisely what we want to hear. Let me turn that back off for you. Okay. Well, all right, let me turn that off. Thank you. Well, that's an excellent little circuit simulator. I am absolutely going to consider this. I, I would definitely, number one, recommend this to a student who's looking for a, a low-cost uh, entry into learning about basic circuits and stuff. I'm going to play around with this more to see if it would be uh, one of those things where it would only be for introductory students or if uh, it's got enough um, if it's got enough flexibility or extensibility uh, to, to eventually go take a student from an absolute beginner all the way up to some of the things that I want to teach. Um, and if it is, then we got a home run right here. I'm going to, I'm going to, that I would actually use it in class, but right now, as it is, we already have something that I would recommend to potential learners. Um, a great, the only, uh, the only real good circuit simulator that I've come across so far. As I've said, I've got a couple of other ones that I've found on Steam, which seem to be more of games than they are actual simulators. So we'll see how that turns out. But overall, um, great, great tool. So glad I found this. And uh, I'm going to be playing around with this a little bit more. And maybe I'll make another video when I get to stuff that's a little bit more um, complex. So, all right, take care. We'll see you on the next one.